Hello, my name is Neil Warner and at the conference I am here because I am President of the Federation of European Photographers. I am a corporate photographer. I am based in Galway in Ireland, which is probably the, most, the furthest part you can get from the centre of Europe. And However, my attitude is that it is also the closest part to the New World. So in a lot of my techniques I've looked to America for my inspiration and uh, looked to um, Europe for my background. Um, I'm a corporate photographer, but I have been a corporate photographer for many years. This is what I set out to be. I started by running my school camera club at a profit. And uh, when my final year of uh, school, uh, I, went to, I was supplying pictures to the newspapers from when I was 13 years old. And um, when I was in my final year of school, I was approached by a newspaper. Could I work for them? and I was very pleased to do so and it was only when I was 23 that I could uh, get into college to study marketing which I did at night and uh, it was a very tough course 37 of us started and three of us finished but I imagine that 70 cents out of every euro that I make is because of my marketing background it is pointless having wonderful pictures in your drawer or in your filing cabinet or on your hard drive if they're not working we are professional photographers we do this for reward, and the only way we can be rewarded is if we meet our clients' needs. So my marketing training has un taught me how to understand what my clients' needs. And sometimes what my clients' needs are different to what my clients want. So I always arrive to my clients without cameras in my hand. We spend some time talking. And sometimes it takes a while for the client to understand that this perhaps is the most valuable part of the day or the week that I'm working for them. So we speak with the client. We previously have looked at the client's work on the web. We have also looked at their main competitors. We try to understand their market. We have tried to understand their ambitions. And if possible, try to read around them in the trade magazines to see what else is happening in, the, in the, uh, their sphere. So quite often we are bringing, coming in as an expert in this area. Uh, in my, for instance, in my cards, my calling cards, I have different cards for each of three industries. So when presenting a card, the client perceives me as an expert in this industry, and indeed I am. However, that doesn't exclude the fact that I have expertise in other industries. I have seen the need in our area to concentrate on high-tech industry, and scientific and research and development areas. And the reason being is that, one, this is the future of our country, the knowledge economy. Two, the government has made a decision that it will continue to invest in research and development despite slashing all other budgets. Three, you can't set a camera on P for professional in this work. You first, you have to understand what you're doing. Secondly, you have to understand what you're seeing. Thirdly, you have to understand what you cannot show because sometimes you have to show very little and tell a story and give an impression of what the client wants you to understand, uh, wants his, his public to understand, however he doesn't perhaps want to show exactly how he does it. When a client comes to you, they're giving you an opportunity to convince them that they should use you. If they use you, you're also giving an opportunity to tell them or to show them why an investment in resources to you can help them. And this is a study and an interesting concept. So you have to, again, become the third eye of the client and look up, perhaps over his shoulder, out, rather than look in towards him. You also, as I said, have brought yourself up to speed on their industry and the work of their opposition. This is vitally important. So, the two halves of my business are one is the communication with the client and the second half is the communication on behalf of the client. So for this we have found our website very, very important. And by monitoring the dwell time on the various pages within my website, I can see how the market is evolving. For instance, in the last year all of a sudden our, the slight involvement we had in video has become a huge involvement and we're producing two and three minute mini documentaries for companies who want material for the website. And I see this as a huge opening area. We're continually looking for a way to serve the client. 
and in the new economy we are not going back. They will always be looking for value for money, so we must look at the most efficient way of working and the most efficient way of delivering images of value to the client. So, you're a professional photographer, you're working in the business, you have clients. There is always new, young photographers coming behind you. As you can see, I am over 50. In fact, I'm over 60. I'm 61. So, I have to watch over my shoulder. Now, I would suggest that you continue to take part in competitions. I have won the Irish Professional Photographer on three, three occasions. No other photographer has won it more than once. That isn't because I'm a brilliant photographer, it's because I put great effort into winning, uh, producing winning images. These keep me on my toes, they keep me ahead of the market, and in some cases it means the market doesn't even try to compete with me, because they, we try to give the perception that the depth is so much that maybe the fight isn't worth the uh, effort. And this has happened recently. We were brought into a medical device company, we competed uh, for the work, and on the second day, the marketing uh, manager said, what is this about you and other photographers? And I said, why? And they said, well, our client required three quotes. We phoned others. They said, who's competing? I, they said, Neil Warner. Well, it's pointless, because even if we're cheaper, we won't get the work. However, if they had cleverly looked at what I do, they all could do. These are good photographers, good people producing good images. If they actually understood the communication aspect with the client, they could have com competed against me and possibly quite successfully. So, the competitions, what have I won? The Irish Professional Photographer on three occasions. I've won the European Commercial Photographer of the Year. I've won the British Landscape and Travel Photographer of the Year. Why do I do this? Is it for the glory? No, because I met people like Eddie Tapp, I met great photographers, and you meet them as an equal and the exchange of ideas and concepts is incredible. So this is the payoff of com keeping up to date in co competitions. Why am I in the FEP? I'm in the FEP because I truly believe in Europe. I believe it wide open, we work together as a cohesive group and we work and keep the position of photography as a valuable tool to business. So, your client has phoned you, he's seen your website, he's impressed. And you say, oh my God, he has looked at my prize winning pictures, each of which I have spent so many hours working and retouching. Be careful. The story must not be better than the store. You have to dis display and compete with images that you can, uh, with the quality that you continually match economically. It is pointless spending two days on one image if you know you can't do this to clients. Or that you advise the client, unfortunately, this approach requires Tuesday's work. You must be upfront and straight with the client. You must identify with the client's needs. You must understand when you're waiting in his reception room, you pick up the trade magazines, you look at the advertisements. The advertisements in their features will tell you what is important to this industry. Is it water quality? Is it air quality? Is it speedy of delivery? Is it uh, microelectronics? And instantly you get an opportunity to understand the client. If at any stage you find yourself at a cocktail party, you'll find the people who listen to you most intelligent. Not the people who talk to you most. So having spoken to a client, you continually listen. And you ask them questions that are open. Who? What? Why? When? And these people will come out and they will actually tell you, they will volunteer the things that are important to them. And then if you ask again sub-questions to refine this, and then say, I need a little time to think. I perhaps could have five minutes and I will continue this conversation because, or maybe perhaps at this stage I should walk around your plant and come back and then we will talk about our approach. Sometimes your success can be self-limiting. I had a client who, we got to a stage where uh, there were a power industry, an electricity generator, and it got to a stage where I met them once a year and we discussed money for the year. And then I had to decide what they needed. But I had to have in their library pictures they needed before they requested them. And this was a very interesting project. But once I was there for five years, I reckoned there was a little movement within the office, perhaps we should change our photographer. So during the interview, I said, 
I've been looking at your work, what I've been doing for you, and I think it's time you changed your photographer. And they looked at me and I said, so I changed. <laughs> so all of a sudden we left our flashes and we came in with hot lights. Uh, we deliberately sabotaged our cliché pictures so that we had to approach it from a different angle. So in effect, they had changed their photographer. The photographer had changed sufficiently from them to be a different person. But it was still you. My clients regard me as a fire and forget missile. They give me the briefing, they give me the job and expect to get the correct pictures at the correct time on the correct budget. So we have to watch the business. We are not artists. We have to be artistic, but we are artistic business people. The biggest compliment a client can give you is a substantial check. It's one thing to say your pictures are wonderful, but if he pays you well, he knows you're doing well. And to do this, you must earn it. You must spend money on your education. In fact, I have a cliche which says the purpose of your studio is maybe fourfold. One, to provide you with a living. And this is important. It must provide you with a living. Two, provide your, your partner or your spouse with security. Three, it must provide for the education and sustenance of your children. And four, there should be something left over for a vacation and education. And education is going to conferences, sharing ideas, kicking around, also perhaps mixing with some artists, mixing with people who are in the, have the artistic bent but are come at the world from a different point of view. Occasionally, you should sabotage your work. And that is, change your equipment just for the sake of getting out of your comfort zone. And also, with clients, get permission to make some failures. So, on a long shoot, say, at the end, there may be one or two pictures that don't work. However, these might be the ones you really, really like. And some, it really it usually pays off. But it also shows the client that you are fallible and you are trying. You're not just coming in, applying your template to their business and that you'll move on and do the, something, the same thing somewhere else. So... I hope you enjoy your life as a photographer as much as mine. If you like, visit my webpage. I'd be delighted to respond to you. Have a lovely life as a photographer, and it is the best job in the world.